Simon says, pat your heads. Simon says, rub your bellies. Simon says, give your daddy a hug. Yeah! Hey, I'm Jesse. Did you know that playing the game Simon Says with your kids is actually really good for their brains? And it's also a fun way for them to practice self-regulation, the ability to control your behavior. This game also requires players to listen, focus, and follow directions. And if your kids are like mine, well, they can definitely use some more practice in that area. In this video, I'll show you how to play. <laughs> to play, start by choosing someone to be Simon, the leader. Simon will give commands to the other players. When the commands begin with Simon says, the other players must follow those instructions. If the command does not begin with Simon says, any player who follows it is out. All right, guys, we're ready to play? Yeah. You sure? All right, yeah. so Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, touch your ears. Simon says, close your eyes. Reach down and touch your toes. Simon says, touch your nose. Simon says, move like a robot. Simon says, play the air guitar. Now freeze. Ah, yeah. I got you. I got you. All right. When kids learn to listen carefully to each command and decide whether to follow, they're demonstrating self-regulation, which will help them do well in school. Simon says, flap your arms like a chicken. Simon says, stand on one foot. Simon says, make a funny face. Simon says, twirl like a ballerina. All right, now bow. Simon says, touch your ears. Touch your nose. Simon says, quietly run in place. Simon says, stop. Simon says, run again. All right, let's take a little break. Ah, oh, got you again! <laughs> all right. You can adapt this game to play with kids of all ages. My little one, for example, may be too young to fully understand the rules of Simon Says. So when I play with him, my focus is introducing him to new words. Simon Says, touch your ears. Yeah, good job. Simon Says, touch your nose. Yeah, good job. Simon says, smile. Simon says, wiggle your fingers. Simon says, flap your arms like a chicken. Simon says, dance in place. Yeah. As you can see, my kids love to play Simon Says, and I love that they get to practice their self-regulation skills. Now we want to know how you and your kids play Simon Says. Share pictures and videos by hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Add your stories in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Simon Says, say goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, I'm Jesse. Just in case you don't know, I'm Jesse. <laughs> Definitely use some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Simon says, "Get it together." <laughs> so, the ability to. <laughs> the ability to control your behavior. <laughs> you guys are so good. Oh, just me in the face. I, I can't win. I can't win with these guys. <laughs> The ability to control your beat. <laughs> <laughs> Simon says, Simon says, rub your belly. Oh, okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah! Are you really good for your kids' brains? No. Really good for your kids' brains? That sounds funny. Actually, really good with, really good with their brains? So you have your kids and their brains? Touch your nose. Touch your nose. Dude, you're good. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get him on that one. When kid, wait, wait. <laughs> when, gosh. When kids learn, ow now, brown cow, to understand the rules of practice, there's, ah, and share, ah, and add. Too young to understand, ah. If the command,
<laughs> Simon says, <laughs> say goodbye. Yeah, it's a fun, fun it's a fun way. Fun, fun, funions. <laughs> Today we have another awesome literacy craft for you and your kids, fishing for ABCs. We're gonna use some recyclables and some paint and some construction paper to make this really cool, colorful game. It's an inexpensive and fun way to connect with your kids and learn a little along the way, or maybe even a lot. So, let's get crafting. Okay guys, so let's do some fishing. You have the letter K. I got two. Let's see. Yay. I mean, what do you, what do you got going on? Second. So for this project, you're gonna need the following supplies. Paper clips, cleaned ice cream carton, tissue box, or something similar. Wooden dowel, drinking straw, small magnet, construction paper, paint brushes, acrylic paint in various colors, including white for priming. The first thing we're gonna to do today is create our fishing bowl. And to do that, we're gonna take our empty ice cream carton, which we had a lot of fun emptying, and we are going to take that and turn it into this by cutting a hole in the top and then priming it. The reason we prime it is because it's going to hide all the print here, create a smooth surface, it's going to hold all the color when we get to this part. And this is a lot of fun too. Now either you or your kids can paint this any way you want so you have a fun design when you get ready to fish. I'm going to do a fish. Can you do a fish? Can you do orange fish? Yeah! The clownfish! Is that this clownfish? Or this clownfish the other funny looking ones, right? It's running football! I don't remember. What color is that? Yellow. That's yellow. All right, all right. Let's see what you got. Yellow. A right. rainbow top. I'm going to spread it out. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I want to do stripes. Do stripes. Can you do some stripes? Yeah. There you go. Orange yeah, you see, you see how when you did it that way, you can make it thinner. You sort of control the line a little bit better. I'm doing this and then a flower in the middle. Yeah, are you going to do a yellow flower? Yeah. No, the middle's yellow. Ah, okay. The next step is creating the fishing pole. To create our fishing pole, we're gonna need a wooden dowel, some string, and some sticky bag magnets. We're gonna take this string here, maybe too long, too short, depending on the size of your learner and the size of your fish bowl. Let's get this much string. You will tie that, tie a knot or two to connect that to your dowel. With that connected, now you take the sticky backs off of the magnets, place the string on one of them, you will take back off the other one, and you'll sandwich it in between. I got you did! Fish. Okay, cool! I am fishing for a worm. I got one! Away! <laughs> she! The next step is to come up with something to put in your fish bowl so that you can play the fishing game. We elected to use a fish template. Now, if you don't have a fish template, you can get construction paper and cut it out in any shape uh, that you want, as you'll see here in a second. You can take your fish and you can write whatever words you want to do. For us, um, one of our learners, her name was Isla, it's my daughter. So, we'll put that on a fish and we'll cut that out there we go so we have a fish to make this fish connect to our magnet we're going to take some paper clips or a paper clip per fish and we're going to slide it right on there and that will make the make it stick to the magnet i found think think i think job father father yeah. Today, that's a good one. We could use today. that. <gasps> if there was an is, I could say she is done today. Okay, like I mentioned before, if you don't have access to a fish template, you do have access to construction paper. Well, one of the things you can do, particularly if you have a an earlier learner, someone who's not able to read yet, you have letters. I'm gonna show you how to make those. So you can take a row here. Now you add your paper clips. A is for, whose name do you know begins with the letter A? <laughs> no, I love. So. Under. Ooh, nice. Oh look, you're lining them up by color. See, so you put all your green yeah. ones over there, your yellow ones over here. Oh, you put the yellow ones gonna match your shirt, right? Yeah, and then you, uh, you have your blue ones in there. Mm -hmm. Nice job, man. Look, D-A-D, you know what that spells? Dad. D-A-D. Dad. I'm gonna take Dad. 
You gonna take dad here? These are dad, right there, D-A-D. -D. Boy. You are a boy. I am a boy, that's a good, that's a, boy, that's a good uh, observation. Yo, Phil. <laughs> that's right. Lachlan's a boy too. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And we uh, we need some verbs so we can make some sentences. See if you can get some verbs out of there. There you go. Get some action words going. Let's see. Um, I made it really long. E. I made it really long. <laughs> oh, it is really long. So some of the skills we practiced today were letter recognition. It's my name. L. L for Lennon, that's right. Hi, girl. There you go. Sight word recognition, as well as motor skill stuff, and we even got some uh, color recognition stuff going on in there, too. Orange! Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Hi, girl, good job. The kids' reactions while doing this activity are always uh, a, a joy to see, and it's always really cool to see the lights go on. <laughs> Wait, look! Lights color! They had fun pulling out the words, pulling out the letters, and putting them together, pushing them around, and we didn't really have to prompt them very much to do the fishing. You can do most of these things with things we have lying around the house, and for this one, cleaning out the ice cream carton was no problem at all. <laughs> girl, good, good job, job. Baby. Good job, job, baby girl. Get your supplies together, get your kids together, and go fishing.
Went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Hi, I'm Jennifer, and this is my daughter Sterling. She's one year old. Sterling and I love to sing together. One of Sterling's favorite songs is Itsy Bitsy Spider. Ah, it's really easy to sing, and you can do hand motions along with the song. I'll show you how. <laughs> Singing by itself is great, but when you add the motions, kids get involved in a new way. Moving wakes up whole sections of their brains. I'll show you the motions step by step. But first, here's how Sterling and I sing it together. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Yay! This is an especially great song because there's a story in it. The itsy bitsy spider gets washed out, but keeps trying and climbs up the spout again. Simple stories like this teach kids the basics of plot and characters. That's why Itsy is one of my favorites. Now let me show you the song and motion step by step. The first line is, The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. So you take your thumb and your middle finger and opposite middle finger and you just climb them up like this. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Make your fingers falling rain like this and then wipe it away. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. Take your hands and make a big sun circle overhead. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Just like we did opposite thumb and middle finger to climb up. So let's put it all together. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now don't worry if you forget a word or emotion. What matters is that you're singing with your child. And before you know it, your kids will be singing and moving right along with you. Fans help each other out. Show how you sing with your kids by hashtagging photos and videos with Mother Goose Club. And please help us make more videos for families around the world by commenting and subscribing. Thanks for watching and start singing. Sterling. <laughs> hey. Went up the water spout. Okay. Never mind. Hi. <laughs> the itsy bits. I think we oh. have it. Itsy spider. <laughs> Woo! The <laughs> the it's the <laughs> spider went up the water spout. Sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bits. <laughs> <laughs> Want to sing? <coughs> the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Yay! Yay! Today's activity we'll be working with sensory bags. It's a cheap and easy way to help your kids develop language skills through sensory play. Some of the skills we'll be working on today are letter recognition and writing, sight word recognition, as well as phonics.
today we are going to do some letter tracing and Isla, you may do some other stuff, do some words. Lynn, you're gonna do some letters, so first things first. So we've gathered our materials and now I'm gonna show you guys how to make some sensory bags. It's really, really easy. Add hair gel into your storage bag. Dab in there. If you're making colorful sparkle bags, put a few drops of the food coloring and glitter into the bags with the gel and mix. Add in your letter magnets. Close the bag by zipping it up. Spread the hair gel and magnets around with your hands. You may want well to keep a paper towel or a rag handy just in case. Can't get messy. Make sure that the magnets are facing upward. Once your magnets are facing upward, you can tape your bag or bags onto the table for security. You can also use colorful sprinkles or rice instead of gel. Then, instead of letter magnets, you can place a sheet of paper underneath with letters or words on it. And you can do a word search. And if you, wait, wait, wait. And if you take away the P. Ram. And if you take away the R. Am. Look how many words you have right there in front of you. Okay. And now I have a name. Sam. <laughs> This was also a great way to get in some sight word practice. Isla was able to see, search, and organize some of her CVC words. That's consonant, vowel, consonant words like cat, hat, and bat. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. Pat. Pat. All right, let's see how fast you can do it. Oh my gosh. Ah. There you go. Cheer on, man. Give us a good tell us. Go, Isla. Go, Isla. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, and line up Pat. enough. Nice. Sensory play is great hands-on learning. The more engaged all the senses are, the more connections kids make to the material. It's experiential learning. Once you get to the bottom, then you can just sort of push, push them out of the way that way. Ah, okay, okay, I got it. We'll take the letter B, we'll shove that in there. Now you, I'm gonna do this. Now, trade, now you can trace out the letter B. Get it real clean. That's, it's the letter B. So when working with my youngest daughter, Lennon, we spend more time working on letter recognition and letter naming. With letter recognition, that's just the ability to recognize the shape and the size of the letter. You put it in there. Yeah, there you go. See, you can do it too. That's the letter N. The letter N says, mm. can you make that sound? Can you say, mm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. With letter naming, we wanted to recognize more that the shape of the letter is actually associated with a name. We also tapped into some of her sound knowledge. Do you know what sound the letter B makes? <laughs> like, in, like in Brandon. No, look, the B is for Brandon. So we have some new bags and a bunch of color over here. So what you can do with that, you can write words and make letters and do all sorts of things. Now you haven't spread your paint yet. Go ahead and spread that across just like a tube of toothpaste. Push from the back and it'll be easy. There you go. Once you mix it up and all the colors and stuff, you'll start to see how the colors mix and you'll get those uh, in-between colors and stuff, those uh, secondary colors and those color blends that you were talking about, like turquoise. turquoise. Yeah, stuff like that. And violet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple and blue make violet. Yes. It over. Let's see what you Matt. got. Matt. Matt. So that would be the letter M. M. Okay. Nap. Nap. That's cool. After we're done with this, it'll be time for a nap. No. What kind of other shapes can you come up with? You do a circle. Do a circle. Hat. Make it as round as you can make it. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Did you know that a circle is basically the same as the letter O? Another O? Make another O. Yeah. See. If you're having fun making O's, you keep making O's. I O. You know what happens when you put two O's, two O's together? It makes the sound OO. That's correct. Did you catch on to that? OO. And if you do three, it's OO. <laughs> <laughs> By having something tactile, something for them to play with, their attention spans were much longer than they would have been if I had just sat down and said, what is this letter, what is this number? Having the experience with the girls with the sensory bags was really cool. So one of the things you see is that they take a lot of initiative in designing the task for themselves. <laughs> she, her. She, she is a dad on the She is. She is. Whoever, whoever she is, she's beautiful. 
She. She. That's that, even better. Have fun learning while playing. Welcome back, everyone. Today we are going to be doing a read aloud with my son Lachlan of the book. Dinosaur Stomp. He's excited about it and I gotta tell you, I am too. Reading at home is an opportunity to explore their interest and gain a love of reading. During this series, we give you tips and tricks on how to bring reading to life for you and your little ones. So, let's get to it. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Dinosaur Stomp. We love this one and we love to get up and get active and if you have a chance with your kids, there's some really cool dances that go along with it. Ah, so it's the moment we've been waiting for. It's Dinosaur Stomp by Harry and Sana Joe. You ready? Yeah, all right, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on in dinosaur land. Mary and Eep are playing dinosaurs. Did you? Dinosaurs! Oh yeah, that's right. It's time for a snack. What will they eat? What color is that? Oh. Oh yeah, nice. The Dinosaur Stomp is a great reading resource. It teaches your kids entertaining rhymes and new vocabulary through repetition and movement. What's she doing? Thinking. She is thinking, that's right. Vegetables. Did you know that some dinosaurs ate only veggies? Did you know that? Did you know that? Do you eat your greens? Yeah. You do? No. You no, we eat uh, <clears throat> broccoli. We eat broccoli, we eat, we eat a lot of kale. You eat kale? You eat your kale, most days. I don't like kale. Oh, well, you know what, you'll grow out of that. You gotta eat your veggies. You wanna get big, strong, <laughs> like a dinosaur. All right, so. Okay. <laughs> Dinosaurs have great big feet that stomp, stomp, stomp. You know where your feet are? <laughs> there you go, yeah. That's stomp, 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 that's right. Dinosaurs have great big, what are those? Teeth. Teeth. That chomp, chomp, chomp. Can you? Chomp! <laughs> yeah, there you go. As you're reading, be sure to focus on highlighting new vocabulary and rhyming words. Using a call and response method is a great way to get your kid to participate. I'm a saurus, stomp, stomp. You're a saurus, chomp, chomp. Turn into a blue one. You want to turn into a blue one? Well, then you have to practice your chomp chomp. Dinosaurs have great big claws. Can you show me claws? Let me see your claws. Come on, man. You gotta have claws. There you go, claws. Oh, which one? Red one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. Dinosaurs have great big jaws that munch, munch, munch. What do you like to munch on, Lachlan? Anything. Anything. Show me how you munch. <laughs> there you go, yeah. There are so many benefits to reading books at home. It helps kids learn decision making by choosing the book of the day. They have the opportunity to read at their own pace. You can dig deep, you can recognize patterns, and explore their interest. It inspires a love of reading and learning. Look at her, look at her, look at her crunch face. You make a crunch face? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, 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 munch. Oh, no, don't no, munch me. That's not the game. If you have a chance, be sure to check out the Mother Goose Club video for Dinosaur Stomp. It'll give your kids a chance to chomp and stomp on their own a little bit, and you can incorporate some of the moves while you're reading the book. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And what's that? Dinosaur. And this is the word. What do you think that word right there says? Uh. Dinosaur. Yes, good job, man. You read the most important word in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chomp, yeah, just chomp, chomp them all. All, yeah, just chomp them. Yeah, yeah. The, thanks for playing dinosaurs with us. Yeah, see, that's it. You, you, you got the hang of it now. Goodbye. After you read the book the first time, ask them if they'd like to read it again. And maybe this time you can trade off on some of the speaking parts. It'll get them to be more comfortable with the material and get them to participate. Construction paper, scissors, glue stick, paper clips. I want you to help me make these hats over here. Can you, make, can you help me make these hats? Yeah. Do you have a few minutes today? I don't have a paper. Well, I'm gonna give you, would you like a paper? I like a piece of paper. We are going to be creating dinosaur hats for our book, Dinosaur Stomp. You'll take your construction paper 
and you're gonna hold it vertically, and then you're going to cut an inch, inch and a half long pieces. These pieces will come out looking like this, and these pieces will be used for your headband and for your spine. And then you'll cut it. You cut it straight as you can, okay? And it doesn't matter if, if you don't do it perfect, you just do your best, okay? Okay, so go ahead and cut your strips. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, okay? And then you're gonna take two other pieces of construction paper, and you're gonna cut them horizontally. And you're gonna get 10 strips about two inches wide, like this. Yeah, now put your fingers there. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you like the grip? You like the grip? Yeah, see, it's different, right? Yeah, it's a whole different thing. Oh, see, now you got more control more power. DIY crafts are obviously a lot of fun, but crafting with tools like scissors, glue, paper clips, and those types of things are an opportunity for your kids to develop their fine motor skills. Along with following directions, this activity becomes really, really good for listening and communication skills as well. But most importantly, this gives you an opportunity to spend time together and get creative. I cut it! Yeah! <laughs> good, good job, dude. Daddy. You'll end up with these a uh, little bit fatter uh, strips and these will become your spikes and how we make those we're gonna fold these over and Maybe about a half inch up you want to start cutting them into a triangle I want you to look something will you inspect something for me? You know what it means to inspect? Inspect means to look at closely and determine whether or not it's working look look Lachlan. I'm gonna go about a half inch Do you know how big an inch is? Do you? You do, can you show me? Look here, bud. An inch is about this big, okay? Then we're gonna do a half inch. It's about that big. Is it about this big? Well, that's a few inches. <laughs> so after you have your spike, you're going to take your spine and you're going to put these two pieces together. So we're gonna put a little glue right here. And then you're gonna put this on there. Let's start up. Start up here. And then you stand your spikes up. And you're gonna glue this together. Take a paper clip, and that will hold it together while the glue dries. We'll do that over and over and over again 10 times. Then you're gonna attach it to the front of the headband, like so. And it will give you a wonderful, magical dinosaur headband. Lachlan, can you say roar? And I crown you king of the dinosaurs? Wow. Roar! This is very good. Ta da! How do you feel about that? I make this one fit your head a little bit better, but I think you look great. You feel great? You look great. <laughs> king of the dinosaurs. Give me one more roar. <laughs> yes. Excellent. That's all for today. We hope these videos help you incorporate reading into your everyday life. For more activities and tips on reading, be sure to check out some of our other videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments or even just to let us know what reading means to you and your family. Thanks again for watching. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make Mother Goose Club character cupcakes, which are great for kids' birthday parties. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make Eep, Teddy, and Baba cupcakes. The materials you need are vanilla and chocolate cupcakes, chocolate and vanilla frosting, vanilla wafer cookies, assorted candies for ears and bows, food coloring, a pint-sized glass, a knife, a spoon, spatula, scissors, and baggies in gallon and sandwich sizes. Let's start with our Eat the Mouse cupcake. I used a store-bought vanilla frosting that I added one teaspoon of blue food coloring to and whisked. You could also use a homemade buttercream. Now take your large plastic baggie and put one corner down in the bottom of your cup. Fold the bag open over the edges of the cup. Now scoop in your blue frosting until it's full. Now lift your bag out, squeeze out the air, and zip the bag shut. Squeeze the frosting down to the bottom corner of the bag. And then snip the end off. 
Now you have a piping bag. Starting on the edge of the cupcake, squeeze gently in a spiral motion until you reach the center of the cupcake. To make the face, I filled two baggies, one with black frosting and one with white frosting. Put a vanilla wafer cookie on your counter. Using your black frosting, draw little eyebrows, eyes, a nose, and a mouth. This may take a couple of practice cookies. Use your white to add a little sparkle to his eye. Now take your cookie and place it in the center of your cupcake. To make the ears, cut a chocolate circle in half and place them where Eep's ears would go. Now trace over the chocolate with your blue frosting. And finish them with two blue candies. And there's Eep. For Teddy, I'm using a chocolate cupcake. I filled a bag with chocolate frosting like I did for Eep. And we start at the edge and work our way to the center. Then we place our cookie face and our chocolate circle ears. Trace over the ears with the chocolate frosting. For her special bow, I'll add two blue candy-covered chocolates. And there's Teddy. Now let's make Baba. For Baba, I'm using a vanilla cupcake and vanilla frosting that I added eight drops of red and two drops of blue into. We're gonna start by making a series of dots around the edge of the cupcake. Then using your spoon, smear each dot towards the center of the cupcake. Now we're gonna make a second row of dots, just like the first. Now let's add our cookie face. And two purple chocolate covered candies for ears. And there's Baba. You can also simply spread the frosting on using a spreader like this, but a regular butter knife will also work. Then add your cookie face and your chocolate candies, and it's just as cute. These cupcakes are the perfect birthday party treat for your little Mother Goose Club fan. Share photos of the Mother Goose Club goodies you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe! <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, that didn't hurt. All right, I get a Band-Aid. I feel good now. Hey, I'm Jesse. I love playing pretend with my boys. Today we're playing doctor's office. Pretend play is a really important activity for your children. Not only does it boost your imaginations, but it also helps develop language, problem solving, and social skills. In this video, I'm gonna show you how pretend play can benefit your child.
When kids play pretend and take on different roles, they experiment with vocabulary they don't use in their everyday lives. I'm gonna use my telescope. What does that do? <laughs> my heart laughed. Do you hear that? It said, <laughs> Good. Very. Awesome. All right, let's check your reflexes. You ready? Whoa! <laughs> you see that? That's right. Boing. Bang, bang. <laughs> Pretending to be different characters allows the child to see the world from a different perspective and learn how other people may feel. Ah, I think I hurt my finger, doctor. Nurse, get a band-aid. That was fast, nurse. Ah, so much better. Is it gonna hurt? Hey, that didn't hurt at all. You're an awesome doctor. You are the doctor of all doctors. Playing pretend also develops problem solving when conflict develops within the story they're playing or between the kids themselves. Did you hear that? Do you hear that, nurse? Gee, give, me, give me. It's okay, it's okay. Can you check my, yeah, can you check my mouth? Check my mouth, what's in my mouth? Um. A dragon. A dragon. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> the possibilities for pretend play are as endless as your child's imagination. Pretend play is so important for brain development. So pretend play with your kids and let us know what you come up with. Show us how you and your children play pretend by hashtagging photos and videos with Mother Goose Club or by tagging us here on YouTube. And be sure to check out the other great videos for kids available on our YouTube channel. Your, your head feels a little warm. Uh-oh. 100 degrees. 100 degrees? I think you need to take a little rest. I think it's a good I'll idea. I'll give you some soup. Soup sounds really good. Yeah. Doctor, thank you so much for your help. I feel so much better. Your soup's ready. My soup's ready. Ugh, I gotta go get my soup. Hey, I'm Jesse. Today, that threw me off just saying, hey, Jesse. Hey, <coughs> let me prepare, let me prepare. Hey, I'm Jesse. Today, gosh, that's probably why people call me Dusty, because the way I talk. It's so cold. What's in there? You're cold? All right, nurse, no, the nurse is cold. When kids play pretend and take on different roles, they, they vocabulary. vocabulary. It's kind of warm in the doctor's office. It's, it's kind of, now it feels better. No, I don't. The. <laughs> Diamond! 10 <laughs> What's the first line again? So for, for the possibilities, sorry. The possibilities. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs>everyone. Today we're going to show you how to make elephant toothpaste. This is a super fun activity and it's a great way to teach your kids about sequence or the order of things. Let's go! Empty plastic bottle, dry yeast, warm water, liquid dish soap, 3% hydrogen peroxide, measuring cups, measuring spoons, safety glasses, large tub or tray to catch the foam, liquid food coloring, different shaped bottles or glasses. Making elephant toothpaste is loads of fun. First, you're gonna take half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and put it in an empty container. You may wanna use a funnel. Next, you'll wanna add a few drops of dish soap into the container. Next, you'll want to add color to your elephant toothpaste. Or you can do stripes. We're going to try red and blue, see how it turns out. I'm going to put it right on the edge and drip it down the side. For your next step, you'll take one tablespoon of yeast and mix it with three tablespoons of warm water. You'll need to mix this for 30 I'm seconds. I'm going to mix it. Do you want to count with me? One, two, three, four, five, 29, 30. Okay. 
Put your safety goggles on, pour in your mixture, step back and see what happens. Okay. Are you ready? Like toothpaste squirting out of the tube. Look. It's coming out. That's so cool. And that's how you make elephant toothpaste. Today, me and the kids made elephant toothpaste. It went okay. It did not go just as expected. It's not even moving. Nope. It's not even moving. Wait, maybe we should add dish soap. Hey Let's guys, off how about we shake it up? It'll barely go faster. Make the reaction go a little faster, you think? Do you think we should maybe try a smaller bottle? Let's yeah. see if it will go up faster. How about this? Okay, let's try that one. The best trial that we had was when we put a smaller bottle with more ingredients. So we kind of upped the measurements and we took the container down a little bit smaller. Okay, we did our first step. Now what's next? Ren, what color should we use? Yellow. You think yellow? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do a little yellow, we'll do a little bit of green. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Good job. Do we do our soap? Yeah, we did. I think we did soap. Oh, it's going, going faster. a little faster. Oh my. There it right. goes. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. That's awesome. Besides being amazing to watch, this is a great way to talk to your kids about sequence or steps done in a certain order. Following a sequence is super helpful for young children because they love to know the steps and the way that things go and they also are very comforted by routines. Okay, let's add the yeast to the warm water and let's see what happens. I'm mix it. I have to mix it back quickly. Put it in the cup. Mm -hmm. But there's more. This also shows your kids cause and effect. Cause and effect is when one thing happens and causes another thing to happen. Like when we poured the yeast in, it made the toothpaste bubble. There it goes, Whoa. look at that. Whoa. Third time is a charm. That's so cool. <laughs> Third time is a charm. Look at that, Rin. Wow. You see your green? Ooh. This look looks amazing. so cool. Rin. Oh my oh, man. goodness. As a mom, it's kind of exciting when your kids learn and almost when they're challenged and pushed, when things don't go perfectly, that's an opportunity for you to kind of coach them through that and just help them to know that things don't always go exactly how you want and that they can learn from that and keep trying. Maybe can we touch it? We have gloves on. You can touch it right there. Uh, Maybe see. I want to give it. I don't know if it'll feel like anything. It's just bubbles. It All right, let's not stop the reaction though. Let's see how far it goes. Wow. Really <laughs> Look at that. Gloves a little it's, it's hot. hot? Yeah. Yeah, that's because it's hot. The hard, um, oh, it is warm. Yeah. So that might be because of the warm water. Though. It, like, Good job, Mallory. Good job, McQueen. Ren, high five. Way to go, Reese. Good high job, five. Ren. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All right, toothpaste makers, you're ready. Don't forget to share your tips and tricks with us in the comments below and let us know how you did. Thanks for watching. Goose Club Playhouse.